Today on this 2010 Chevy Express fan, we're going to install wiring kit part number 31345 by Hopkins. First we need to access the rear of the vehicle and locate the manufacturer plugs for the rear taillights. We're going to go ahead and disconnect the two. There's a push tab, depress, just pull the connection out of the bottom. We're going to plug our new connector in line with these two. We're going to use the short plug off of the module, which is also the red and yellow plug. You can see the red and yellow wires. We're just going to connect those in line with the manufacturer's harness. Press them firmly together, make sure the locking tab snaps in place. We're going to go ahead and install our ground wire now. Go ahead and use the ground bolt that's already set up by the manufacturer. We're just going to take that ground bolt out. So we just go ahead and put our bolt through our terminal and I'm going to just reinstall it. Okay, now that we've made our ground connection, we're going to go ahead and just kind of bundle our wires up here and put them in the sub-channel of the vehicle. But before I stick it in, I want to go ahead and take my four-pole plug that we're adding. I'm going to route it down the sub-channel. I'm going to pull it out the lower access hole. Okay, now you'll see I've got two wires left. The green wire is going to route over to the passenger side. And what we're going to do there is we're just going to follow the manufacturer's harness here. And I'm going to use zip ties, but you could also use some black tape. As you can see here, we've got some extra wire left over. What I'm going to do is just zip tie that up out of the way. And this is our passenger side connection. Again, we press on the locking tab, pull the bottom out, and then install our new connector in line with the manufacturers, firmly pressing them in place so they lock together. So now what we need to do is make a, a connection with our power wire. Take the spool of wire that came with the kit and it's going to get routed to the battery. Bring it up and out, make a connection. We're going to crimp that down. Then I actually want to go back with a little black electrical tape. Now I'm going to go ahead and tuck that back down into the channel. Pull my wire out here with my four pole plug. Now I'm going to use half inch loom clamps. This is part number A0500. And use them to attach my wires to secure them to the vehicle. I'm just going to run them down here to the corner. I'm going to take another loom clamp and attach them. Now what I'm going to do is peel back the weather stripping here. What I'm going to do is take a small corner out of the body lip here so that we can route our wires past it and underneath the vehicle. And I'm just using a pair of tin snips again to cut off the corner to allow us access to route our wires outside of the vehicle. Then I can put my weather stripping back and it will help hold and secure those wires. You can see here where our wires have come down through our channel that we just fed them in. When routing your power wire, you just want to make sure you stay free and clear of any hazards that could jeopardize the wire integrity, meaning pinch points, exhaust locations, heat. I choose to run mine through the, the frame of the vehicle. You can see here where we've come out of the frame to go up to the battery of the vehicle. I've got about four feet of wire left, which I know isn't going to be long enough to get all the way to my battery. And this is because of the route I chose and the make and model of this particular vehicle. So what I'm going to do is add some wire to it. First, I'm going to strip back a little of the outer coating, give myself enough wire to add a butt connector. So now I've got enough wire stripped back, I can add a butt connector. Just want to crimp that down securely. Check your connection. All right. The color of the wire doesn't matter so much as the gauge of the wire. I've got some TED gauge black wire here that I'm going to go ahead and use to finish routing to my battery. So I'm going to go ahead and strip that back, put it in my butt connector, 
Crimp it down. And again, I want to check my connection. I'm going to take some black tape and wrap it up. Now we can finish routing our wire up to our battery. I'm going to head up the frame channel following the firewall to get into my engine compartment. Okay, now I'm just going to pull my wire up through the engine compartment here. So now what we're going to do is just follow the manufacturer's harness. We're going to route over to our battery. Okay, you can see here we're now we've made it to our battery. But before I cut off my wire, I just want to secure the routing all the way out of the frame to the battery just to make sure that we're good. What I'm going to be using to secure it is a, some zip ties. Up here on the top side of the engine, I'm just going to zip tie off here to the manufacturer's harness. Now I can clip off the excess from our zip ties. And we're ready to connect to our battery. First, we're going to disconnect our battery. And then what we need to do is remove this bolt or the battery hold down. Okay, now that we've got the battery hold down mount out, we install our new battery terminal, which you'll see has an additional post here so that we can add our terminal to it. Okay, now we've got our positive battery cable reinstalled and you can see we have a terminal and that we can now access so we can add our power wire. I'm going to strip back my new power wire that we're installing so we can make a good connection with our fuse lead. We're going to crimp that down. I like to go ahead and wrap that in a little bit of black tape. Okay, now we can go ahead and install the terminal onto our new battery post. Tighten down the supplied nut with our new battery post. Then we're going to install our fuse. Fuse cap. This completes the installation of our new four pole connector on a 2010 Chevy Express van.